Pop! OS is one of those distributions that has aimed to take Ubuntu and make it better. And I think over the last few years, the people behind Pop! OS System76 has really, they have really done a really good job of taking Ubuntu and making it better. Now, there's a lot of things going on with System76 and Pop! OS outside of the actual distribution. We know that they're moving away from a GNOME based desktop environment and moving into something of their own creation but until that time comes we do have a brand new pop os release and that is pop os 21.10 now frankly i think that their naming scheme is kind of bad because it wasn't released in october and i know what they're doing they're basing it on the ubuntu number but i think if, they, if they're going to try to do their own thing they should come up with their own naming scheme but that's beside the point Today what we're going to do is take a look at five of the best features on Pop! OS 21.10 and I will say this, there aren't a ton of new features here. This is definitely a more of a polish update than a new features update and that's okay. The last release that we saw was the first release I believe of the Cosmic Desktop so it's good that they've gone through and spent a few months kind of polishing the rough edges and that's what we're going to see today. So let's go ahead and jump in. So I have a brand new install of Pop! OS 21.10 here. Now the only thing I've done is ran through the initial setup where they allow you to choose what kind of dock you want, whether or not you want light or dark theme, that kind of thing. That's not new, that was here before, but it's really still really good. The first thing and probably the biggest thing of this release that you'll notice is the new app drawer. Now they're calling it the application library. That's a little pretentious for me. It's an app drawer. So if we, we click on this icon here, this is what the app drawer now looks like. Now, if you've used Pop! OS in the past, you'll know that this looks significantly different than it used to because it used to be just the GNOME Applications panel. Anytime you hit the Applications icon, you'd get this full screen list of applications. There's no organization whatsoever out of the box. You can create folders and stuff like that, but that's usually on you to do. And other than that, it's just a gigantic list of applications. This comes pre-sorted by default. So we have folders down here at the bottom and you can create new, a new folder if you'd like to. And it also allows you to edit the folders that are already there. So you don't, you're not stuck with this categorization if you don't want to use that. That's cool. You can just hit the button up here. You can rename it. You can get rid of the folders. You can drag things around just like you could with the previous app drawer. And of course there's search here. If you need to search for something, you don't feel like going through and searching through uh, manually. So that is probably the biggest feature of Pop! OS 21.10. And I have to say, I really like it. It's not necessarily completely different, different than what GNOME does. And I think that that is a good thing because a lot of people are used to that gigantic list of, app, you know, grid of applications. This is similar, so people aren't going to get lost or be upset about it. But it's different enough that it kind of stands out. So I really actually quite enjoy this. And I can see myself being happy with this as well. So that is probably the biggest feature. The next one on the list is one that I really can't show you because it is something for a different device. So Pop! OS 21.10 now supports the Raspberry Pi. And I think this is important because more and more Linux distributions are supporting the Raspberry Pi. And that's really great because that means more and more work is being put into ARM support on Linux. And the more ARM support we have, the better we're going to be prepared for when the inevitable future comes and everything is based on ARM. So I think that this is a really good step now. With the support of Raspberry Pi now, we'll be able to see more development for hardware support on ARM-based devices. And I think that's, that is really important. So if you have a Raspberry Pi, now you can try out Pop! OS 21.10 on that device. It does note that it is in development phase, so you're probably going to expect some bugs if you try this out. So don't use this as a, as a production machine, at least right out of the bat. But I would expect development process for that to go really quick because they are a, a distro based on Ubuntu and Ubuntu has an, a, a Raspberry Pi image. So they should be able to take a lot of stuff from Ubuntu in order to make their version of Pop! OS for Raspberry Pi much better. So that is number two. So the next one is something that I'm not all that familiar with. But from what, my, what I've read is that Pop! OS has had a feature now called Pop! OS Refresh for a little while. And basically what this will do, it will allow you to go through and reinstall your operating system, or your Linux distro in this case, 
uh, without deleting any of your personal files. It also apparently handles all of your OS upgrades. So if we go to the settings application here and scroll all the way down to the bottom and do o see OS upgrade and recovery, in this panel here is where we'd find Pop OS Refresh. Now, or at least from what I can tell, uh, their release notes weren't all that in depth on how you actually get to this. I'm ass also assuming that if you in in have Pop OS installed, and then you went from like a, a live ISO, if you booted into a live ISO and it came up, it would tell you that you have Pop OS, ref Pop OS installed and then give you an option to refresh it instead of just completely nuking and paving. So I'm, I'm thinking that that's the way it works. I can't test that and there's not a good description of how this works, but I, it has said that Pop OS refresh has gotten some new features, but it didn't actually say what those new features are. So if we actually go to get out of this VM here and go to a browser here. It says your system will now be able to recognize Pop OS is installed from the recovery partition and offer the refresh OS. So I was wrong. It's not a live ISO. It's from a recovery partition. So this is very much similar to what some OEM manufacturers do. And when you get a brand new computer, it has an operating system on it. A lot of times there'll be a separate partition that will allow you to recover your device should something go wrong with the main partition. And this is not surprising given that System76 is a hardware vendor so that they could do this. But I'm wondering how this would work if you install this on like a non-System76 device. I would wonder if they would go through and do that partition as well on that device or if it's just System76 stuff. That'll be something to test out in the future. So number four on the list is better hardware support. And this is something, again, that I can't really show you. But according to the release notes, System76 has put in a lot of effort to make sure that Pop! OS will play nicely with the most recent hardware. Now, this includes, obviously, the most recent kernel. So if we go through and do uname-a here, we'll see that this is using Linux kernel 5.15.5. And they've also gone through and started to change the way they use kernels. So I can't really explain. I don't have all the details. I haven't read up on it. But I know that they're going through and changing the source of the kernels. They used to take the Ubuntu kernel. Now they're taking, I believe they're taking the mainline kernel. I could be wrong about that. But I know that they're making that change. And what that should mean is that the most recent hardware support that is baked into the Linux kernel will come to Pop! OS quicker than if they had to wait for that to be filtered from Ubuntu. So that is kind of good. So because a lot of people, when they switch to Linux, are switching to Linux on really new hardware. So we've seen things like Linus Tech Tips, things where he tried Pop OS and he just unfortunately happened upon a, like a system ending bug and didn't read the output. But the the point is, a lot of people who want to use Linux want to try Pop OS because they've heard good things about it, and it's good. That, that, that Pop! OS is working very hard to make sure that the most recent hardware is supported. And again, it makes sense because they are a hardware vendor uh, by trade. So a better hardware support is definitely one of those features that we should all be happy about. And the last one is some more recent versions of GNOME applications. Now, I don't know how important this is given that they're going to be switching away from GNOME, but they're going to still be using some GNOME applications. So similar to what Ubuntu has been doing, They've gone through and kind of put together a potpourri of GNOME applications from different versions. So for the terminal here, we have 3.38, which is pretty old. Why they haven't gone through and done a new one yet, I don't know. It's just the terminal. Uh, for files here, we have version 40.2. And if we go to the applications here for, so let's say, the calendar, we have version 41. So as you can see, it's kind of a mix mash of GNOME versions. And I think that that's something that we're going to see a lot more of. We're going to see distro developers kind of picking and choosing what applications get updated. And it's going to make things really confusing for Linux uh, YouTubers because we're going to have to go through and actually kind of parse what versions of which are on here and it's not going to be the same across distros anymore. It's, it's going to be a royal pain. But that's kind of what they've been doing. So a lot of stuff here has been updated to newer GNOME versions, not necessarily the newest, but they, but some of the stuff will be newer than it was in the previous version of GNOME or of Pop! OS. So what you should be able to do is expect this stuff to be very stable because they're not using bleeding edge GNOME software, which sometimes has a tendency to be a little bit buggy. 
or they've gone through and removed features from that the more recent GNOME stuff. So you should be able to stay on the older versions and still have those features. So that is Pop OS 21.10. And it's a really good release. There's not a ton of new features, but I really like the application drawer. I'm going to call it the application drawer because the application library doesn't sound right to me, but the it, I really do like it. I think that they've done a good job of polishing this to make it even better than it was before. And it'll be interesting to see, I mean, because it, it, it makes a lot of sense that they wouldn't put a lot of effort into putting new features into this for this desktop environment, knowing that they're going to be changing in the future. Now, we don't know when they're going to be changing to, to whatever they're calling it. I think they're going to be calling it Cosmic Desktop. So, uh, but we don't know when that's going to happen. It could be the next release. It could be two or three releases from now. It depends on how long it takes them to make that development work. So we could see several releases like this that are just kind of minor updates, but we'll see how that goes. So that is it for this video. If you have thoughts on Pop OS 21.10, you can leave those in the comment section below. You can follow me on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I would like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson, Tool, Steve A, Mitchell, Art Center, Amateus, Carbon Dated, Merrick, Camp, Joshua Lee, J Dog, The BSTs, Rock, Peter A, and Crucible. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.